Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of the Motherland Experience. It's your girl Nye here and today I have a very special young lady that I'm going to be interviewing. Her name is Diamond and when I tell you she is an African Globetrotter, she is an African Globetrotter. She has been everywhere and we're going to get into her experiences, the good, the bad, the indifferent and just the overall joy of her being on the continent and especially here in Ghana. So please sit back, relax and let me take you for a ride. Hey, what's up everybody? I am sitting here chilling, sipping some nice wine with my new friend, just chatting away, Miss Diamond. So you guys, please welcome Diamond to the show. Hey, Diamond. Oh my God, thank you so much for having me. Oh, no, thank you. It is absolutely an honor. I mean, we've just like hit it off, can you say? <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's been really, really awesome. So can you please share with us where you're from? Of course, so I'm from Buffalo, New York in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, born and raised, lived there my whole life. Okay. So I'm a Buffalo girl, 716. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> she just put out that 716. So shout out to my Buffalo crew out there. <laughs> so um, can you please tell us like what, you know, led you to Ghana? Why are you here in Ghana? <sighs> okay, <laughs> let's see, my journey to Ghana. So the first time I visited Ghana was actually 2019 for the year of return. Mm -hmm. um, I came with my mom and my cousin and we loved it. And so I've been traveling around different African countries, but when I heard that Ghana was promoting the year of return, mm -hmm. um, really as like the 400 year mark of slavery and to bring you know all of our people back home mm -hmm. i just thought that was beautiful and i had to come and so i loved ghana then mm -hmm. and this time around i was like it's been a couple of years like i have to come back and so here i am oh wow <laughs> so i guess like the year of return there was like so much around it so much like i guess you say hype and you wanted to be a part of that because of you know kind of like slavery and things like that of course and then also like Ghana is known for December being the month. Like, if you're gonna travel to Ghana, come during the festive season, Ghana doesn't disappoint. It, there, there's events left and right. There's so many things to do, see, like, everybody's so welcoming, so like, mm -hmm. it just makes it easier to come back. Yeah, it really, really does. Like you said, December is the month, Daddy December, guys, okay? <laughs> I mean, you can find anything to do here. Oh, you yeah. really, really can. So, kind of like during this festive month, have you gone to like any events? What have you done? Yeah, actually, um, I went to quite a few events. I've been to markets, different oh. festivals. Last night, I just went to a play hosted by the National Theater. So, I'm pretty new when it comes to like the world of theater, but I was like, Listen, if my people are putting out something, I want to go and see. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually called, I think, Dilemma of a Ghost. Mm -hmm. I loved it. It was a cute little outdoor play. Mm -hmm. It was different. So, I mean, definitely if you're around this week, next week, yeah. check out things like happening from the National Theater. They have different orchestra performances, dance, mm -hmm. plays, musicals, like just other things to immerse you in the culture other than just going to, you know, the clubs, the bars, the parties. Right. So it's a different side. It's cool. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm, kind of like that more artsy type of side. Yeah, the artsy vibe. <laughs> the artsy vibe. I like that. I like that. So with you being a young woman here by yourself, young person, because may I ask how old you are? You look great. Thank you. Mm. I'm 27. I just okay. turned 27 in September. Oh, wow. So you're so representing the young people coming back to the continent. <laughs> I am. I am. So with that being said, kind of what have been your experiences being here in Ghana as a young woman in terms of the culture, the vibe of the people? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, honestly, being here has been amazing, as it always is. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I have traveled around Africa a bit and been to different African countries. So I guess you could say my level of comfort in terms of a solo traveler as a woman, as a black woman. Yeah. I'm not gonna say I'm completely comfortable 24 seven, mm -hmm. but I would say like, I'm able to navigate. I feel good in the spaces that I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, and again, with Ghana, this is not their first time seeing you meeting black Americans. Right. Which is, you know, one thing in and of itself. And then in terms of that, everybody's warm and welcoming. Mm -hmm. And because there's always so many things to do and see, and people really want to bring you in, navigating's easy. Mm -hmm. And like specifically for Ghana, um, I would say Ghana is a more developed country, you know, like, so certain things are easier. There's Uber, there's Bolt. Right. Um, I will say when it comes to language barrier, I don't necessarily face that in Ghana because a lot of people do speak English, mm -hmm. which of course, I would always say learn a local language when you go somewhere. But of course it is easier when you can understand them and they can understand you. Right. Um, in terms of just like safety and security, 
watch your back wherever you go. That's like how I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna look out for where I am, no matter where I'm at, but I can't say that I've ever felt in grave danger in Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, of course, anything can happen at any time, anywhere. That's no matter if it's the US, Ghana, you're in Jamaica, you're in you know England, anything can happen anywhere. But a lot of people will scare us from traveling alone, traveling to the continent. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it, it, there's nothing to be afraid of. You know, there's nothing to be afraid of. And I've again, like I've loved every moment of it. So mm. I encourage everybody to come and visit, whether you're a solo traveler or traveling with the squad family, come back. There's no reason to not come back. Mm. I'm just loving the enthusiasm, <laughs> guys. I really am because with you saying that with you have to watch your back anywhere that you go. Mm -hmm. But of course, with us being from the West, from the States, you know, it gives you more of like a freedom kind of like being here. It's a peaceful country. You know, you don't have to face like anything in terms of, you know, kind of like any wars or anything yeah. going on. And that's really lovely. And they are welcoming to, you know, us coming back. So yeah. that makes it even yeah. more fun. So kind of with you, you being like a, I would say not a globe trotter per se, <laughs> but I, I envy her. I mean, you've been to a lot of different countries. So what countries have you been to? Okay, so when it comes to the continent, mm -hmm. let's see, um, I've been to Ghana, I've been to Senegal, I've been to Uganda, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, and then next week I'm hitting my newest one, Nigeria. So oh my God. listen, we're moving and we're grooving. And I've also been to countries um, in the Caribbean as well, Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, Barbados. Wow. And of course, Canada's next door to me, so I don't really count that. But still, it, it's a country. Right, it counts. <laughs> I would say it's a country. Yeah, I've been to um, I've been to the UK for the first time. I've been to Greece. So I've I've dabbled, you know, around. I would say I've spent the most time traveling in Africa because I love it here. Yeah. And I think most of my travels going forward, I will be looking to see different African countries and even Ghana. Like I've really only spent time in Accra, mm -hmm. but I think the next time I come back to Ghana, I want to venture out and see what the country has to offer because it's more than just Accra. Accra is just yeah. the capital, just the city. Everybody's from everywhere. People are from the Volta region, people are from here, there. I need it's to big. see them. Yeah, yeah, I want to see that too. Ghana is big. Wow. So you've been like everywhere. <laughs> I mean, for me, I, for me, I never think so. You know, like I'm like, okay, it's only been six, seven, ten countries, mm -hmm. like, and there's so many. So to me, I'm like, I've just scratched the surface, but I've dipped my toe in. Wow. <laughs> so kind of like with you dibbling and dabbling mm -hmm. around, you know, the continent and even beyond, but we're really talking about the continent. Mm -hmm. What similarities and differences are there to some of the countries that you've been to on the continent and Ghana? Okay, similarities. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes people refer to even different parts of Africa and in general, they just say Africa. They right. never say the specific mm -hmm. country, the specific mm -hmm. city, but there are some things that are African, you know, like there's that unity. There are those similarities that are African, yeah. the way of life, the hustle and bustle, even the community aspect, the way people think, talk, mm -hmm. move around. Like I would say that like that is something that is very true to a lot of places that I've been to. Mm -hmm. um, I would say some differences will come like, for example, and when I speak about Ghana, I can only speak about Accra because my main experience right. has been in Accra. Um, and a lot of countries I've visited, I've stayed in a lot of the main cities. So okay. at least speaking about um, urban life in some of these countries, I would say it's similar. Um, again, Ghana, I would say is more developed. So, that has, of course, its perks. But I would say going to countries that are less developed, it's just a different sort of, it's a different sort of challenge, a different way to navigate. It really helps you open your mind to the ways that you travel and the ways that you think. Um, but let me think of a country that I would say is like completely different. Uh, Rwanda, mm, okay. I would say Rwanda is completely different from Ghana. Um, In what way? So, so many ways. Um, <laughs> first, <laughs> first off, Rwanda is a beautiful country. Mm -hmm. I know most people, when they think of Rwanda, they think of the genocide. Yeah. And that's pretty much all they know. Um, and that's true. Like, their population and their country is still, in a sense, grieving over the genocide. Mm -hmm. um, but for a country that went through such a mass genocide so recently in history, Rwanda is very developed, very beautiful. The people are very resilient. Um, mm. It's so peaceful. I've never been to a place so peaceful, so clean, so quiet. Wow. Like, really? it, it's a place that anyone should visit. Africans should visit. Africans should visit other African countries. You know, like, I think there's a, 
perception, even within Africans, that all African countries are the same. I need to go abroad. When I, they say abroad, they mean off the Everywhere. continent. Right, exactly. No, there's so much different life that's within the continent. And I think that, like, they should explore that. You know, East Africa is so different from West Africa. Mm -hmm. And even within West Africa, um, I've been to Senegal, which is, I would say, Senegal is a Muslim country. Oh, really? And in Ghana, there's a heavy Muslim population, mm -hmm. but even the ways of life are, are so different. You know, like from my bed, from my room, no matter where I'm at in Senegal, mm -hmm. I can hear the call from the mosque. You know, really? people are people are conservative. People are still very friendly, mm -hmm. but just the way of life, when people move, it's different. It's more centered around religion. Mm -hmm. um, again, Ghana, I've met, most people I've met um, are Muslim in Ghana, but even so, just the way of life is different. Everything is shaped differently based on um, the unique culture that Ghana has tied into religion, tied into the different influence from outside and just the way people conduct their day to day. Like it, it's so different. But again, like every African country I've went to has this beauty and I love all of them. Wow, well, I can see that. <laughs> I mean, you have just laid it on out there, <laughs> laid it down front. And like, I, I would say that it's you're really blessed because not all young people get to see what you have seen mm -hmm. and do that amount of traveling, you know? So kind of with your experiences, how has that shaped you as a person? How do you feel it's really taught you with all this travel? I would say, I would still say I am who I am, mm -hmm. but it's definitely changed the way I think, feel and approach everything. You know, um, traveling has opened my eyes to a ton of things mm -hmm. and specifically traveling in Africa, you know, on the continent, my mindset has been completely changed. Well, of course, like growing up, you know, if you being 27, um, when I say back in the day, you can kind of use that time for Yeah. But no, growing up, like I'm thinking about even at my grandparents' house, we're watching TV mm. and this is when you see commercials, you know, you see a white lady in the middle of the village, you yep. have skinny black kids with big bellies for just a dollar a day. Right. <laughs> you can you can feed feed the world. Right, you know? like the feed the children the, commercial. The, the kids are starving. <laughs> and again, that's not too for one, there are people that are starving. Yeah. Okay, there are kids that are hungry. Um, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna downplay that, but that's all you saw. Right. You, you only saw the poverty, you only exactly. saw sick kids, and you only saw between that and you saw, you know, different war torn countries. And of course, 20 something years ago, things were different for different countries. There were people that, countries that were in war, there were different things going on. But coming to the continent, I'm able to see so much more beyond that. You know, like, and it reminds me that like, people are more than their circumstance. And then it also allows you to compare to back home. Right. You know, a lot of people from abroad, not just Africans, they have this perception that Americans are rich, life is great, everybody is wealthy. That's not that's not the case at all. But it allows you to know, like, you know what? There are people at home who are homeless. There are people that you know who, you know, are, are lower class and nothing is different about them. You know, they're not their circumstance. They're still just who they are without that. And I think you have to remember that as you travel and see things, you know, like keep an open mind, mm -hmm. help when you can help. But at the same time, I wouldn't say people shouldn't be frightened by these different things because at the end of the day, you face the same things back home. That is true. Yeah. So <laughs> that is really true. It even just like, I would say my level of patience, mm -hmm. I have way more patience now that I've traveled the continent. <laughs> um, just the way of life, people move at their own pace, mm -hmm. you know? Like there's no rush, even in a fast paced city like Accra where there's so much hustle and bustle, people are still moving at their own pace, they're living their life and it like forces you to like, take a step back, take a breather. Like life isn't going anywhere. And so constant reminders of that day to day, it could right. be that like, for example, the first time when we came to Ghana, um, we had a driver, he had some car issues. Mm -hmm. And one day we're like, okay, we're gonna go to, you know, Cape Coom, and then we're going to Cape Coast. Like we're gonna mm -hmm. do it. And along the way, oh, we had some car trouble. Oh, oh it took us hours to get to Cape Coom. It took us hours to get to Cape Coast and then back. But like, that's just patience, flexibility, living in the moment. It would have been easy for me to, to flip off, go off, be like, what's going on? I need a new driver. Where's AAA? Exactly. And there's no AAA, 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 here. AAA here. No, but like, mm -hmm. but no, at I the end of the day, yeah, I'm here with my mom. I'm with my cousin. Mm -hmm. We're healthy, we're safe, we're still, it's still an experience. And to just be in that space and be able to constantly like, take a moment, take a step back, like 
it's valuable and it takes you a long way while traveling. Because if you don't have that patience and the ability to take it slow, um, yeah, you'll just go crazy. And you're not gonna enjoy what there is to enjoy when you're so when you're so uptight. Everything has to be perfect. And I tend to be a perfectionist in some regards, but I've scaled back because I'm like, you miss a lot of things when you're trying to be so right, like kind of like regimented. Yeah. You know, especially when you're, you know, in another country. And I'm so glad that you're saying this mm -hmm. because I think some of us when we come back, you know, we forget, you know, we are we're not in the States or in the UK or and you know, and that's okay. You know, or abroad wherever we're from, we're here, we're on, you know, we're in another country. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to, to like take a chill pill, relax, you know, kind of fall into that pace mm -hmm. and I know it's something that's an adjustment and that we're not used to but what you said was so true you miss so much that mm -hmm. way and it could teach you even like some patience exactly and mm -hmm. it can teach you some patience so I'm so glad that you said that and kind of like listening to you you know giving the advice to different travelers what is one when you like traveling in any country mm -hmm. one time that you were kind of like saying, okay, what am I doing? You know, to have like a winning moment like that. Um, honestly, I feel like I have so many of those moments. <laughs> like, honestly, I sometimes I'm able to step outside myself. Uh -huh. As a traveler, I become a whole different person. Like who I am at home yeah. versus who I can be when I travel, sometimes they're like complete opposites. The way I'm so welcoming and friendly and just, sometimes I just, looking back, I was like, Diamond, what, how, why did you do that? How did you do that? But I'm still alive, I'm still here. Right. Um, but even like, I'm thinking even just like in Ghana, mm -hmm. um, the first time we were here, just on the last couple of dates, we happened to be out and about. We met some people, all of a sudden we linked up and now all of a sudden we're going everywhere together. We're going here, we're going there. Uh -huh. At home, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm like no new friends, mm -hmm. but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not meeting a stranger yeah. the same day hanging out, and then all of a sudden we're spending the week together. Mm. And I've been able to do that in so many places. But again, wow. that I wouldn't say that's not who I. Because it is who I am now. Like you know, I am that much more friendlier and open. But like, there are definitely certain things that if I told my mom, she'd be like. You met who? You were in whose car? You guys went. You guys went to where? With who? You just met them, right? Yeah, there, there are those things in those moments, and they happen every time. But honestly, I will say, some people will say, "Diamond, that's not for me." Mm. I'm thinking life how it comes, okay? Yeah. And I will say, I'm riding on the good vibes because I've been blessed. You know, knock on wood. Mm. No, nothing has happened to me, you know? I'm still alive, I'm still healthy. Um, I've been able to embrace things, say yes to things that I never would have. Mm -hmm. And like, it's been good. They've all been life lessons. So I think with that, you know, life hasn't hit me on my head yet. Like, that, that's where I'm going. Right. And I think honestly, like, you have the best time when you do that. When you decide to become a different version of yourself, like, that's what traveling is for. Yeah. And you're gonna, you know, sometimes you stick to who you are. Mm -hmm. Like when it comes to morals, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to stepping outside your comfort zone, you have to do that. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't want to do that, stay at home. <laughs> you know, just stay at home. Stay at like, this is what traveling's all about. Yeah, like you yeah. have to, like, mm -hmm. there are so many things like, for example, even this interview, this is not mm -hmm. something I normally do, but I think it's cool. I like what you guys are doing. I think it's important for other people to hear, yeah. like, African experiences and experiences on the continent because Africa is not a monolith. And even someone's experience in Ghana is not the same from the next. Mm -hmm. But like, you don't know what you don't know. Like, put it out there. Like, let let everybody see what the world has to offer. Yeah, because I mean, the world is a big place. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's the whole world out there. And listening to kind of like your stories, your perspective, people need to hear it. You know what I'm Thank saying? You. People I need to hear it. So kind of like, have, have you like faced any challenges traveling? And if you mm -hmm. have, how have you overcome them? Okay, let's see. Challenges I faced while traveling. Um. Hmm. Okay, there, there's no, there's there's a few. So I would say the biggest challenge that most can face, especially those who are, I'm not even gonna say, it, even Africans can face these issues. Yeah. Language barrier. You know, like a lot of African countries have anywhere from 30 to hundreds of languages. Wow. You know, and of course yeah. there's the, there's the colonizer language, you know. Mm -hmm. People can speak English, they can speak French yeah. or Portuguese. 
But just because a country has that as their national language, it does not mean that everybody is speaking English to the same fluency that you are. Mm -hmm. It even, everybody speaks English. It doesn't mean they hear your accent. You can't even understand their accent. So I would say language barrier um, is definitely a challenge. In terms of overcoming it, you have to, you have to push through. Again, for me, it's, it's mindset. Like every challenges, every challenge that I faced, I've overcome with like adjusting my mindset, taking a step. Because when it comes to language and language barrier, you have to just remind yourself, I'm not in America. Right. Everybody right. doesn't speak my language and I don't speak their language. You know, everyone's not gonna understand me. I'm in their home. Exactly. And so taking a minute, you, you gain more patience. You take time to understand people. That's when you learn a couple local words mm -hmm. here and there, you know, like, but also when it comes to language, you can read a lot without understanding. Right. Body language, emotion, expression, um, taking time to remember that. Because think about baby. Babies can't talk. You understand the baby. <laughs> there are people who smile when they get older. You know, exactly. the, the, the mind goes. They're, not, they're, not, that that they're not saying what they should. You still understand them. You're able to see what they need. You're able to understand. They're able to understand you. They're able to read. Mm -hmm. So like, it goes the same way when it comes to different languages. It's all the same. Wow. I never <laughs> thought of it that way. I mean, to be honest with you, that is very true. Kind of like just thinking about like a baby, or like you said, maybe somebody's mind is slipping. Mm -hmm. You have to read those cues, read that body language. And that's universal. Yeah. It is. And I think mm -hmm. like, even when it comes to like, you know, just adjusting who I am a bit, mm -hmm. you know, for the better while traveling. Um, let's see, like Senegal's a country I went to when I would say nobody spoke English. Mm -hmm. um, I believe Senegal is probably colonized by friends. And mm -hmm. so aside from Wolof and their other local languages, they speak French. I don't know, like a French. Right. And people might say, Diamond, why would you go somewhere without learning the language? Or without, listen, okay. It, I decided to go to Senegal and I said, I'm going to make the most of it. I decided to like dive in head first and I don't regret it. Like, no, I, I did struggle with the language and I wasn't able to understand people and sometimes they couldn't understand me, but I was friendly. And I think being friendly goes a long way. It does. You're, mm -hmm. we're looking at each other. Mm -hmm. We can't understand a single thing, but I'm smiling and you're smiling. And so you know that like, right. you know that I'm okay or I'm trying and it's, and it's fine, mm -hmm. you know, like, because of that, I did a lot more walking. I couldn't oh. understand the taxi driver, and it was just, I thought I was getting scammed. I didn't know mm. what was going on. Um, Google Maps wasn't as helpful in that situation, so I walked a lot, but like, that wasn't bad. I got to see a lot of things that I wouldn't have seen if I'm in an Uber, in a taxi. I'm walking around, I'm experiencing, I'm feeling the life. Exactly. You know, so like, mm -hmm. everything that's a challenge really is just an experience. Like. I would say even on my worst day, I'm able to laugh because I'm like, wow. <laughs> the things I've been through on a day-to-day, -day, this is my, my African life, you know? So this is your African life. Yeah. Wow. Well, I love your attitude. I really do. I love your attitude. I love your spirit. Oh, thank you. It is just absolutely awesome. And it is infectious. And I, you know, I know that for our viewers that are listening, especially our young young women out there, you know, you are really kind of like a inspiration, you oh. know, because some some people, some young people are like, oh, how can I travel? What should I do? Mm -hmm. You know, but you're making it happen no matter what. So I applaud you for it. Thank I you. I really do. I applaud you for it. Thank it's you. it's Thank awesome. You. So, um, just my one last question to you: okay. What advice would you give to? Um, young people, especially young women, solo travelers, mm -hmm. of kind of like what you should do when maybe you travel, just any tips, anything you maybe would have done differently, mm -hmm. what would you say to them? Um, okay, tips. I would say, don't be so fearful, like just do it. You know, like if you're thinking, should I do it, should I not do it? Mm -hmm. Like don't always second guess yourself. You have to know when to trust your gut, yeah. And when fear is holding you back, you have to know the difference. Right. And like that takes time with like knowing yourself and even with traveling, like mm -hmm. that opens you up. But I would say just do it. Um, as a travel, some like safety things that I've done, um, for example, I take a picture of all my documents, all my credit cards I have as a backup. You never know what could happen. That's true. Um, and then for me, like my emergency contact is my mom. Mm -hmm. So I'm always going to send her all the backups, all the information. Mm -hmm. um, 
for example, I'm in Ghana. If I've met friends before that I might be with, I'm gonna send her their number J just in just case. Just in case. Because you never yeah. know. Have you seen Diamond? I haven't talked to her in a couple of days. Oh yeah, I just talked to her. She was at a festival. Oh. By the way, her phone got stolen. Yeah. You know, little things yeah. like that. Um, you know, we are in the technological era. Despite what people think about Africa, technology is here and it's booming. We have WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. You can share your live location. You know, whether if it's in a group chat, it's with your family, mm -hmm. even with people that you trust, share your live location. It doesn't hurt. Right. Um, you know, know where you're going. I would say downloading off uh, offline maps. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, always trust your gut. Mm -hmm. You know, like be, be aware of your surroundings. Anything can happen at any time. It doesn't matter where you are. And then, like, really embrace every moment. Mm. Like, I think that that's so important. You know, despite, like, people have anxiety. People have so many different things. Yeah. And traveling doesn't always fix that. But you have to still step inside yourself to step outside yourself mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. allow yourself to really feel what there is to feel. You know, like, be present, be in the moment. Like that, I think that's like a huge tip that can go a long way with any traveler. Wow, I love it. You heard that, guys? Be present, be in the moment. Of course. Spoken by yours truly, Miss Diamond. <laughs> oh my gosh, Diamond. I feel like we've been like, you know, this is just so easy. We I know, I've loved it. For forever, okay? <laughs> but I have appreciated you. Thank you so, so much for coming on the channel and just, you know, putting it all out there, sharing your experiences. No, thank you so much for having mm -hmm. me. I love that I've gotten a chance to do this. Mm -hmm. And I hope, I hope people see this. I hope people come visit Ghana. I hope you guys come visit the continent. There are so many beautiful countries in Africa like please visit them to my Africans out there the ones who are born and raised on the continent visit every country is not the same see Africa before you go and see Europe US there's nothing out there okay Africa really does have it all like when people know that and believe in like what's in front of them yes man bro Africa's gonna be hmm. oh yeah Africa rising Definitely, exactly, definitely. Exactly. So please listen to listen to this sister Diamond. She is telling you some gems and telling you some jewels. And um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, and please share this information with others. Cheers.